Good afternoon, Dr. Ratna Puri, and thank you so much for this conversation and the thing you have come to Smart Conference 2024, organized by Cure SMA India. And my questions are related to SMA only. So uh, we know that you're senior consultant in medical genetics at Senior Ganga Ram, Sir Ganga Ram Hospital. So uh, as a senior consultant in medical uh, genetics, how do you approach diagnosis and management of SMA from a genetic perspective? Thank you so much for this. Um, the privilege to be here with you to answer a few questions for spinal muscular atrophy a disorder that's very close to my heart so actually any diagnosis including that of sma starts from examination of the child so first we take a history we see whether there is any affected child in the family then we look at the child we look for cl clinical features of sma and if clinically we suspect that the child has sma then we do a small blood test and this is the MLPA test for SMA and this will identify 95% of the children who have spinal muscular atrophy. Beyond that there are other tests but I think generally this is sufficient to pick up most of the children who have SMA. Thank you for answering that ma'am. And ma'am, uh, what role, we know that uh, on the panel discussion we were talking about the patient support group, how important is that? So what role does genetic counselling play in supporting SMA patients and their families and how do you facilitate this at Sir Gangaram Hospital? You know, there was one line which I thought was very relevant and which we heard during the panel discussion in this meeting and that was often then rare but we care and that really sums up everything that we have to do for spinal muscular atrophy and I'm going to limit myself to spinal muscular atrophy what is the role of a patient group we've been diagnosing as in our previous question and answer children with SMA for the last 25 years the tests were available in India we didn't have to send them anywhere outside but there were a few patients who kept looking for solutions for their children. And these were the families which then came together when the therapies came in to form the Cure SMA. And it's very, very relevant because they are the push. They know what's the best happening world over. They want to bring the best to their children. They have to put the systems in place. Everything is available in India, I must say that. We just have to put our systems in place and create the appropriate awareness. And it's thanks to this journey that today we've got the multidisciplinary clinics that looks after all the needs of children with SMA. And that is as far as the child and the management of the child goes. But as for all rare disorders, we also have to manage the family. And here comes in the very important role of counselling for risk of recurrence, counselling for the availability of prenatal diagnosis, and also counselling for testing at-risk family members for their possible being a carrier of SMA. And last but not the least, the Society for Indian Academy of Medical Genetics now supports universal carrier screening for spinal muscular atrophy. So this in a nutshell is the role of genetic counseling in the care of children and families with spinal muscular atrophy. And I think as advanced technically and way of you know research and development we are getting it is becoming a bit easier for us to uh, get these kind of diagnosis earlier right absolutely that's absolutely correct T tomorrow if we have the therapies available with us and we are able to provide it to our children we will be transitioning transitioning to newborn screening because the earlier you treat for any disorder the better is the outcome for that patient you said it right ma'am Ma'am, um, challenges in uh, what are the major challenges in applying this, these genetic therapies for SMA and how can these overcome in a clinical setting? Okay, so the therapies are expensive. They are very, very expensive. But we have a major move of made in India. And we are hoping that over the years and the months, maybe let me say months first and then the years, that we would be able to make these available in our country 
at a cheaper cost. At these costs, it's not possible to treat every child. SMA is one of the commonest genetic disorders in the country. And therefore, we need affordable therapeutics for this. And as I keep saying, it's not just giving that drug. It's absolutely, absolutely important to do the holistic multidisciplinary care. So look after nutrition, look after the lungs, physiotherapy. So we have to train everybody and we have to set up centers where this can be provided. The patients learn and they have to go back home. What, what is the quality of life I'm giving if I'm going to call them every two weeks to my center? You have to get physiotherapy done there. There is no quality of life. So we have to develop a smoke and hub model, which is think is very, very possible and appropriate in our country to manage the multidisciplinary care along with the definitive therapy for these disorders. Thank you for that, ma'am. My last question is, what future direction do you foresee for genetic research in SMA, particularly in the context of Indian healthcare system? I am extremely positive. You know, when I came into the field of genetics, we, we used to write letters to doctors to tell them what sort of patients to refer to a genetic clinic. And see in the last 25 years where we are now. We are talking about treating children with genetic disorders. And we are talking about developing therapies in our country to treat our patients with genetic disorders. We are a huge population and for me that's a big asset. I have always felt that if we are so huge and we are very very talented because it's our scientists who do all the mammoth tasks outside our country and therefore we have the talent, we have the number, we just have to put them in place. We just have to get our clinicians to work with our scientists to understand what the need of the hour is. And already steps have been taken along with all our research institutions in the country towards this. And therefore, I'm very, very hopeful that in the years to come by, we would be making great strides towards developing indigenous therapies in India. You said it right, ma'am. Earlier, there was a very difficult. It was very difficult to diagnose this, but now we have come up with a lot of better techniques and stuff and treatments as well. So, in the coming years, coming months, sorry, coming months and coming years, we'll definitely have much better treatment plans for this. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this conversation. Thanks, Thank you Thank so you. much.